to pass along knowledge of the prophecy to our generation. But rank and file Masons say such speculation is groundless. There's a lot of people that feel they're, they're experts on Masonry because they've read all these books and they've, they've made all these connections or, or you know, uh, they've, they've sort of deduced, oh, well, this, this, and that. Well, that's all fine and good, but it's all kind of speculation. It's all guessing. For centuries, the Masons' commitment to secrecy has fueled speculation about the extent of their power and influence. Their headquarters are located in the most powerful city in the world, Washington, D.C. Some claim that the Masons secretly manipulate the levers of power in our modern world. In their secret rituals, some see the stuff of conspiracy. In their enigmatic symbols and imagery, which have found their way onto America's Great Seal and the One Dollar Bill, some see a hidden agenda. Could the Mason's secrecy be rooted in the need to protect knowledge of the doomsday prophecy designed into the Great Pyramid? Members insist they are simply a fraternity based on ideals first formulated by medieval stonemason guilds. Using symbols of the ancient building trade, they use the construction of an edifice as a metaphor for building character. This came about because people were losing sight of their connection to the Lord, and they felt that having Freemasonry, the individual member could then grow much better and become a better human being rather than just going on a materialistic fashion. Today's Freemasons say that part of the Brotherhood's allure is a fraternal bond between today's Masons and their counterparts from antiquity. Linking present with past enriches the meaning of their mission. They say this connection is not literal, but figurative. But some researchers contend that the connection is a matter of historical fact. Early ancient masons traveled to Egypt for the purpose of building this great altar to God. While they were in Egypt, they taught the Egyptians the plan of God as they were building the Great Pyramid. But those who believe that the Masons were prophets also think the Masons had a backup plan. That a code within the Great Pyramid may have been just one of two ways they devised to pass on their warning. The other was to verbally transmit in secret crucial ancient knowledge from Masonic generation to generation until it reached us today. Are today's Freemasons safeguarding a 5,000-year-old mystery? We're not trying to foretell the future. We're just maintaining a universal wisdom that can be passed down from generation to generation. As a Freemason myself, I've spent a lot of time stating there's absolutely no conspiracy in Freemasonry. I've been interviewed many times, particularly in the US, where people have suggested that there is. And I've said, no, 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 there isn't. And now I know there is. And the evidence in Washington, D.C. is so clear that anyone can check it out for themselves. It's astonishingly clear. For some, Washington, D.C.'s layout is the smoking gun of a secret Masonic agenda in the United States. They say that the alignment of streets and monuments cleverly integrates Masonic symbols like the society's iconic emblem, the compass and square. But what, if any, importance is there to this? Is it a parlor trick signifying nothing? Or a sign that the Masons know more than they're telling? Was there a Masonic agenda? I don't, I don't think so. You know, a lot of people can take one little symbol and, and make all this stuff out of it. And sometimes it's just sort of like, well, no, I mean, that's, it's just straight lines. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, how they built it. But those who believe Washington's hidden Masonic symbols are real claim it may be just the tip of the iceberg. A clue that the Masons have secret knowledge of our imminent end. Other interpreters, however, say that these symbols, and not those of the Masons, are the key to decoding ancient Egypt's doomsday prophecy. 
In these hieroglyphs, they see a warning of a disaster far different from a nuclear nightmare triggered by 9-11. If they are right, a celestial body 91 million miles from Earth will unleash a final global cataclysm. According to some, the Great Pyramid is a calendar of doomsday, warning that the end of days is near. But others believe it is not this monumental structure that conveys the Egyptians' prophecy, but these tiny symbols. Could these hieroglyphs hold a coded message specifying how our end will come? Some claim the symbols from a revered Egyptian text speak not of a nuclear holocaust triggered by 9-11, but a celestial disaster. Additional texts reveal that the Egyptians believed the moon, sun, stars, and planets dictated man's fate on Earth. They didn't observe the celestial bodies for scientific knowledge. They used them to, to create calendars, they used them to, to time, they used them for, in the desert for directions. They believed that these celestial bodies were, uh, were, were deities, and to them it was the stars and the position of the sun that imposed and regulated events on the ground. Some researchers believe the hieroglyphs warn of a cyclical event that the ancient Egyptians survived thousands of years ago. They theorize it was a catastrophic phenomenon triggered by the sun, so destructive that only a handful survived. Those who believe this theory say the clues begin with how the Egyptians used astronomy to understand their place in the cosmos. One constellation above all was central to their perception, Orion. The reason the Egyptians were very focused on this constellation was because, apart from it being bright and attractive, it would rise at dawn just before the flood. To them, it was a reassuring sign because the Nile flood was on its way. Ancient Egypt relied on the flooding Nile to power the agriculture it needed to survive. This led the Egyptians to link Orion with their god Osiris, who controlled all matters of life and death. This made the constellation a likely place for the Egyptians to look for signs of a coming apocalypse. In Egyptian mythology, Orion's linkage with death also made it a destination for a pharaoh after he died. Most historians believe the pyramids were royal tombs designed to help the pharaohs journey there. Most monuments in ancient Egypt, most tombs and temples, are oriented towards the Nile. But the pyramids are oriented not towards the Nile, but they're oriented towards the sky. They're oriented towards the heavens. So what they are is a connection. They form a connection between the earth and the sky. And what they are doing is providing a means for the king's spirit to ascend to heaven. But others believe the pyramids are oriented toward the sky for a different reason. They contend that the Egyptians were directing the attention of future generations toward Orion because Orion holds the key to understanding their prophecy of a celestial apocalypse. They also theorize that the alignment of three stars within Orion served as the Egyptians' inspiration for the placement of the three pyramids of Giza. If you draw a line along the diagonal of the two largest, what was odd is that the third smallest one was offset from that line to the left. Why a smaller one? And, uh, and, and why is it offset? The stars in the belt of Orion were like that also. And since the constellations represented Egyptian gods, and Orion was very important in Egyptian mythology, it would make sense that maybe they use this as, as a model. So Orion theory is fascinating because it does give some reason why the pyramids may have been built at the zigzag. But according to some, the significance of Orion to the Egyptian doomsday prophecy only becomes clear in the pages of a revered text called the Book of the Dead. The Book of the Dead is the modern name 
that we give to a collection of spells that the Egyptians actually called the Book of Coming Out by Day. They were to facilitate your transition to the next life, your rebirth as a living spirit in the next life. Chapter 17 of the Book of the Dead seems to describe a global catastrophe that happened thousands of years before the rise of ancient Egypt. The dismay after the incredible horror of the catastrophic disaster is making it impossible for the terrorized population to escape. Some researchers studying other portions of the text believe this disaster occurred when Venus made a specific looping motion through Orion, which last occurred in 9782 BC. And in the Egyptian text, the uh, chapter 17 from the Book of the Dead, there is a code described, and that states that if the loop from Venus above Orion comes back, that will be the year of the next cataclysm. According to researchers' estimates, this celestial event is expected to occur again in the same year ostensibly specified by doomsday prophecies of the Mayans, Hopi, Hindus, and other cultures across the globe. 2012. Could the Egyptians be yet one more ancient culture predicting our demise by cosmic forces in that year? A clue to the nature of this cataclysm is said to be contained in this phrase from the Book of the Dead. After the destruction, the old lion turned around. Some interpret this reference of the old lion turning around as a description of the Earth experiencing a cataclysmic reversal of its rotation. They believe such a reversal can be caused by an extreme phenomenon called a polar shift. Scientists theorize that a polar shift can occur when the Earth's swirling molten core changes direction. Some speculate that this would trigger vast and sudden displacements in the Earth's crust. This is when, if you can imagine, the crust of the Earth is going to rotate somewhat over the magma. The problem is, is when you actually get the physical crust of the Earth rotating, that's when we're going to be in for a ride. There are some that believe a polar shift on Earth can be triggered by sudden and dramatic spikes in energy on our Sun in the form of massive storms and solar flares. What we know from the past is that there's an 11-year solar cycle and we'll be coming to the peak of that solar cycle in 2012. And according to a number of studies, this next solar climax will be far more powerful than any that's been recorded. Still, more scientists reason that the effects of solar activity in 2012 will be far from catastrophic. Worst case scenario is we have some problems with our satellites. We have a lot more satellites up there than we did at last solar maximum, and the ones we have up there are much more sensitive to damage from solar radiation. Further, most scientists say the chances of an imminent polar shift are astronomically low. Many agree that polar shifts may have rocked the Earth in the past, but that the most recent occurred tens of millions of years ago. They say no evidence exists of a shift within human memory that could have been recorded by the ancient Egyptians. If anything like that happened, we would see the record of it in ice core drills, as well as uh, sediment drills off the coasts of uh, New Zealand and other parts of the world. And all those drills tell us nothing like that happened. Researchers have also called into question the ancient Egyptian text on which the polar shift theory is founded. Many people today will read those texts and pull out uh, applications to the modern times in terms of catastrophes and end times and prophecy. And I really don't think you could do that because they're not specific enough. It's just a matter of an interpretation. Still, the possibility remains that the Egyptians knew of an 